Hi friends, welcome to Srinu Technologies, myself Ram Kumar. Today we will discuss about queue management or case management in Blue Prism. Okay. So in this case management, uh, the modules are, uh, what we will see, we will see the objective, what is the objective, okay. And after that in queue man man management we will see how we configure queues, okay and how we configure tags, filters, how we can use them and how we can generate reports out of it, right. So, we will understand uh, the complete picture of queues, right, right, let us get started. So, objective, so we have to understand what are queues actually, we have to discuss more about it and then how they are useful in real time, okay. And then so by this end of the session, we will know completely about queues and then so, what are the features available and then the advantage of it, right. So, so coming to the overview, so a queue is nothing but think that you have a collection of data. So, I think before starting about queue, I think we said we go to robotics or this automations, process automations when there is a repetitive task. Repetitive task in the sense some set of data we have and then we need to process the data, so, right. So, each data if you refer to as, as an item uh, or a collection of uh, items, right. So, the complete data has to be processed one after the other and then the same task has to be done. Means example, think that um, there is a multiplication you want to do or there are um, different students in a college and then you need to add uh, marks for them right or you need to process the marks for them. Based on the marks they have got you need to um, calculate the percentage for each record for each student. So, this is a repetitive task right. So, so similarly a process also can be there where there may be 10 inputs for one process and then same process has to be repeated for number of times. In that case uh, triggering for multiple times is very hard for us right. So, what we can do is we can one feature called queue management is the queue or case management, right. So, is available in Blue Prism where we can load this collection of input data, right. So, each record is one input, record might have multiple columns. So, one record will have one set of inputs and then such like uh, we will be having multiple records so called collection and then this collection can be loaded into one uh, place called queue right. We can have multiple queues also. So, for each process we can configure multiple queues or one queue per process or um, one queue per multiple process anyways we can do it. We will show it when we are going to the tool, but from theory perspective understand queue is a place where we load this data items into uh, a case management or a queue system and then which can be retrieved by multiple robots at the same point. Okay. So, think that there are some 10 records, each has to be uh, processed and each one is taking some 4 hours or 5 hours. So, in that case if you go by step by step or record by record it will be taking very high time. So, we have deployed multiple robots, right. So, we can deploy multiple robots and what they can do is uh, record 1 can be given to uh, robo 1, record 2 for robo 2. So, we can distribute among multiple machines and then we can process the input data which is required. So, that is the use of a queue actually and then the advantage of having a queue is we can monitor what are the items or what are the records which are currently getting processed easily. So, there are some stages actually or there are some indicators. So, we will go through the indicators, uh, but for now understand that there are some indicators like so when the process is loaded or when an item is loaded into a queue, so what is the initial stage? So, when the when a process is working on the input items, what is the stage? And then once uh, the process is complete, what is the stage? If there is an exception during the process, what is the stage? So, there will be four kinds of levels when we are dealing with queues. We will go to the tool and then see each one of one by one, but for now understand this is how we can do and then from control room we can see from control room I think if you remember we have run a process. Similarly, we can see what are the queue items which are available and what are the, what is the state of each item means it is just loaded or process is complete or process in progress 
or uh, is there any failure in the process so that's what we can do okay so on a whole what we can do is uh, it it will store manage share and report on process work see we are saying a process means every time for a process there should be some in, uh, input and then there will be some uh, output right so the process successful is based on the output which is generated so the no process is a fault actually but based on the if there is a problem with the input there will be problem with the output if there is if the input is very fine the process will be very fine so something like that so the process status once it is stabilized actually so the process status or we say that it we, we should not say that the process is failed actually for the given set of inputs the output is not as expected so we can report on example for 1000 students we are processing and then 999 students it is fine for one student there is a problem so there is no change in process there is no problem in process either the input uh, is wrong or there might be a scenario where the the unique scenario is not handled as part of the process means exception handling is not proper or something like that so we'll go through how we can navigate through step by step or record by record and then we will see right so as i said a process can use different work queues and a work queue can be shared by multiple process so think that we have a q1 q2 q3 these three queues can be used by the same process because q1 is having one set of data q2 is having one set of data and q3 is having another set of data just imagine and then the same process is getting the data from the queues on need basis and then it is processing it this is one scenario scenario 2 is one process is having mapper to one queue scenario 3 is same queue is being used by multiple process okay so this is from a overview perspective and let's go to the tool and see how we can use this queue uh, queues actually we okay. have studios uh, so we will not have the queues here so we have to go to the control room in the control room i think if you remember we have seen so this is session management is default we will see the process which are published and where to run so we have something called queue management actually okay this is what is queue management if you see here by default there is queue one and then there are no items in the queue queue contents if you see this section right side uh, bottom section so this is queue contents means all the queues all the items which are in the queue are listed here so it is also a collection where it is having records and multiple columns but these columns are fixed and then based on the number of items we load those many records will be formed here so the collection the collection we, uh, the columns we cannot change so it's not that we cannot have different columns in our data so data will be there data will not be shown directly here so data will be encrypted and will, will be shown here with the item key so item key is we can keep one column example you have student details and student id is one unique id and all other things are some other columns are there so when we s we can make that the student id as the primary key and then that will be shown here right so how we can do is before loading some items into queue we need to prepare one queue we need to configure one queue separately that is important right let's see how we can configure one queue here so if you go to system and then if you see here work queues right by default it is shown as q1 so what i will do is instead of q1 i will give some some name like student queue right so key name is what will keep is id id is our so id this id it's better to match this id with the column id of student id if it is student id better to give the name as same name here right so it's it's important to have the key name and the column id matching here otherwise there is no problem the queue will work but we will not have a unique data display means when we are seeing the queue we will not understand which data is getting processed until we open the data and see it as the data is encrypted and not shown to us directly only with this item id or the key name we will be able to see it okay so as of now we will not go with other things just so there if you see here there is a provision for example you have 10 process here and then you want to 
make this queue available for only one or two process you can select it here but here I am not uh, actually doing it because if you see here there are multiple process here loop through sample I am not doing that but we can do that I am telling about the features or the provisions which are there right just this is done and then I am saying apply if you see here there is a student queue I can add a new one also if again if you see here this is employee queue emp queue like this we can have number of things and then here it will be emp id right so I will say apply so these are the two queues created for example we have done right once you come to the control room you will see that in the queue management earlier it was q1 now if you see there are these things so if you see the report here on the top which I am telling earlier so not only not only it is just for taking the items one by one or um, sharing the items between machines or the robots it will do a reporting also if you see here how many are worked how many are pending how many are referred and what is the total and what is the average time example same example thing that there are 100 records each record it takes 5 minutes of time when you have run in parallel in uh, so when we run the process it took that much time right we will get the average here means what is the average time taken and what is the total time taken for processing those many x number of queues right so we will see how we can get data into this and then we will go deeper and then we will see how we can prioritize queues means not only the items which are example I have loaded some items into the queue and you have loaded some items into the same queue but first I have loaded and second you have loaded by default mine will be on priority but you want your items to be prioritized based on the process or based on the data you have right so that's where we can keep something called priority okay and what is tag tag is nothing but it just a, so as the name suggested tag means for a collection of data we want to tag some reference name to it example you are processing some data month by month okay when I am loading the data into the queue I will tag it as month hyphen year or something like December hyphen 2017 and last month data was with November hyphen 2017 so once this load data is loaded into queue and getting processed after some time after one year or something you will think okay you are in think that you are in December 2018 then you will think oh I want to see November 2017 and December 2017 how many orders are been executed so you can just using the tag filter you can filter based on the tag name okay so you will usually get the count so that is the purpose of tag we will see all those but for now so try to understand this is how it is there right so we will see how uh, so we have seen how a queue is there and we have prepared a queue and then we will see how to load a queue now so for doing that I will create a new process so uh, queue process okay sample process to um, for hands on for hands on queue okay management so this is what I have created so I have this thing so ready so I want some collection so before loading something we need some collection so I need to prepare one collection as well so I will say uh, um, employee or student we thought of student right student details this is the collection right so we want to add some fields so we will add four fields for now so it can be uh, first one is number which is field name is ID okay second one is some text with name right third one is text with uh, what will keep location okay or oh, is this fine and then fourth one text with gender something like this okay this is our column names which we want for the student and then let's initialize some values so let me have some five records so id 1 2 3 4 5 
वन टू थ्री फोर सिक्स वन टू थ्री फोर सेवन वन टू थ्री फोर एट वन टू थ्री फोर नाइन वन टू थ्री फाइव जीरो राइट सो दिस आर द फाइव थिंग्स नेम इज नेम वन नेम टू नेम थ्री नेम फोर नेम फाइव नेम सिक्स सो वी हैव दिस मेनी लोकेशन इज लोकेशन वन लोकेशन टू लोकेशन वन सो वी कैन हैव दिस आल्सो राइट सो मल सेम पीपल कैन बी ऑफ डिफरेंट पीपल ऑफ कैन बी ऑफ सेम लोकेशन आल्सो सो सो एलओसी थ्री एलओसी वन सो वी विल कीप ट्राइ टू कीप सिमिलर डेटा सो One is three times there. Two is two times there. One is three is this thing, and we can have female, female, male, 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 and female. So this is how we have. So this is our data. I saved it. So now I want to load it into queue. It is very simple. So we need to pull action. So you might be confused. I have not written a business object or a VBO. Business object is nothing but VBO, visual business object. VBO means. so you might be thinking i'm uh, calling an action and then where the vbo is because i have not created any business object to load data items into queue so the blue prism has some default objects or business objects which are created and they are readily av available for you and then we can use them right if you come here if you see there are some collections the highlighted things are collections work queues calendars credentials environment locking encryption so these are the default objects which are available for you so these are the objects which we created if you remember right so excel and these things are objects which we have imported so this is what is work queues is what is we want for and then if you see here there are multiple there are lot of actions inside that business object but we will go with add to queue which is first one right so what is the queue name so what is the queue name So you remember? Don't remember? No problem. Let's go to the control room and see what is the queue name there. So I have to before this I need to I think I need to close this window until unless that will not open. So control room queues. You want to go to student queue, right? So let me go to student queue. So. so this is add add to queue right so this should this name should be exactly same otherwise it will not work so data what is the collection so we have created one collection which is ready available here i am pulling that here so and then we have priorities and everything for now we will not give any priority so the default priority if we don't give anything is zero 0 to 5 we can give and then 0 is having the highest priority if i give some priority as okay let me do this i will add student details first and then and then i'm giving a priority of 2 okay we will see how this is possible and then this i will say this is tax i am saying november 2017 so this is the tag name which i am saying okay we will see what is the use of this thing so different till this all i will explain to you but for now just understand this so output says collection of so once you load this queue into uh, the queue actually queue case management so each item will for each record once unique id will be generated so that collection example here if you see in our collection we have six records so for so this collection will have item id is which will be of 6 so that will be very unique we can see it so that's what output i am is not required to take it but still we can take it okay so this is how we are doing so let me connect the dots if you see here this is student details right this is student details and these are the item ids means the ids which are generated right so let me 
just make the size somewhat bigger for you and then yes so let me save this and then run it so first before running what I'm doing is I'm going to the queue and seeing whether there is some data or not no queues are having any data so let me add some data and see how it works so let me run this so just go mm, what is the problem data items must be between text must be in between so there is some problem we did not do it correctly so it's a text see so we did not give it in quotes so that is a problem it thrown actually so these things I like it because you will see diff some different types of errors you will know how to do it okay so we cannot always do first time right it's practice we have to do it so we miss this and then by seeing the message we got to know what it is and then we have fixed it let's run this again yes if you see here item ID is one of six let me open and see what are the things if you see here the item of the work queue so initial value will not be there see if you see here for a collection initial value will not be there initial value is nothing but the values which we are giving as input manually giving if it is generated it will be there in the current values if you go there see this is the unique data which you will not understand right this is encrypted form of an item id and then for each this item id is created for each record how many number of records you create there could be lakhs of millions of crores of uh, records but every item id will be unique so that any year so you are doing some 20 years back data also it will be of unique id only that is the intention here so i'm refreshing it and then before adding one more time let's go and see how, whether our control room is having the data or not right so let's go me go to so here we are not seeing any data because we have to refresh it so let me refresh so if you refresh here if you see here the the process which is there is if you see a student queue if you see the report pending are six pending are six there are no worked total are zero and the duration is zero and then if you see here the three dots state that this is the i'm telling about four states if you remember first is initialize second is in progress third is completed fourth is exception so third and fourth completed or exception will be uh, one of them will be present right if there is exception it will be exception if there is completed it is completed so it will go through so all the things are initial stage and if you see here there is something called item key id and the priority we have given and the tags we have given right resource means from which uh, machine it is got loaded and when it is loaded what is the item stamp and then similarly we have other things where once it is completed you will get the date when it is completed right means load what, what is the load when it is loaded when it is completed what is the if there is exception what is the exception happened what is the reason for it so there are many things to be tracked so when we are loading next data we will see that we will load as a December data and priority something so we will just try to first use this queue items and then see how we can navigate between these all actually right so so hope you have understood how to load data into queue and then we will still further see how we can use these items and then for reporting purpose right keep watching our videos keep learning